Hey everybody, this is Rusty again with Collector Auctions, and today I have got a comic book haul video for you. Now, these books all came from a little comic show down in Annandale, Virginia. This is a show that I went to several weeks ago, or last month. I, it's hard to tell. These things seem like they happen every other week these days. But it was the same show I went to, the last show, where I didn't pick up a lot the last time. I struggled a little bit. If you watch that video, you know that I almost walked out of there without really picking up anything, but I still came away with a few gems. This show, some of the same dealers were back, but there were other dealers that I have dealt with before that had some really hot comics, and I ended up getting some really nice things, and some nice books to spec on, and... As you guys know, what I'm trying to talk about more and more these days is my methodology. Why do I buy the books that I buy? Sometimes I buy them because they bring back childhood memories and there's something I want to get again and to have again. In a lot of cases, you will see me buying books that I think I'm buying at a good value raw that I think I can clean and press. I can send them to CGC, hopefully get that nine that 9.8, that 9.9, get those high grades, uh, depending on the book too, right? A lot of times it'll be, maybe it's an older book and I don't need it at a 9.8, but there's still value at lower grades. This is the thing I want to talk more and more about to you guys. I don't want these to just be show and tells. There's plenty of shows out there that literally just give you a book and they'll show you a price and everything, but I want you guys to think about your methodology about what you want to do in the hobby. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing. For the most part, if you see me buying raw books, I will be buying them to clean and press. I have my own presses. I work on them on my own time. I try to bump them up, try to get them those, push them up to the higher grades, and then submit them to CGC and hopefully get those grades. And a lot of cases, I will sell those books. But a lot of other cases, I'll keep the comics. And I'll give you a good example. I've got one sitting back here in the background. I, excuse me for a second. I'll have to dig for it if I can. Let me see if I can find it. This is a, this is a great example of a little bit about what I do in the shows here. Now, this book didn't come from a card show. This one actually came raw from Heritage Auctions. And this is a great example of what I'm talking about. Go find that raw book that maybe has some defects that can be worked on and then try to bump it up. This book I bought raw from Heritage Auctions, they had graded this as a VF, I want to say a VF plus. Now, if you do the correlation, that grades out really, a VF plus grades out to a 8.5. Well, I took this book, I looked at those pictures and I determined, okay, it's worth the gamble. I actually got it at a really good price. I don't and again, I'm sorry, I, I don't necessarily have the price here for you, but that's something you guys work on. Work on this yourself. You know, go look up the values of these books. Use your apps like Cover Price and Key Collector. Those are the ones I use. And then compare them to eBay as well. What are the books being sold for? What are they, be, uh, what are they selling for? And then look especially at what are they being sold at? Well, I bought this at a really good price roll from Heritage, even with all the fees. They had it graded as a VF minus, or a VF plus, I'm sorry, 8.5 is what it, that would have translated that to. I worked on this book. Now, I did this with a signature series with Walt Simonson. His signature's covered up a little bit right here. But I then, of course, submitted it to CGC They uh, down at Heroes Con back in June and just got it back recently, and I got a 9.6 on it. I bumped this thing up from potentially an 8.5 book all the way up to a 9.6. This is what I'm talking about. This is this is what I do. And it's what I'm trying to do. Every book you see, every book you see, I pull out of here, this goes through my mind. Now, in this haul, this was, like I said, a little comic book show. They actually had baseball cards and things like, uh, sports cards as well. Um, that's another interest of mine, but it's not something I really even paid attention to at the show. I was definitely going down there for comics. And I will show you the books I'm talking about here. And I'm not, I'm not going to get into too much of the prices. Sometimes you'll see the prices on what I paid. And I can talk about that a little bit. But I kind of know I've done research on the majority of these books. And if I haven't done the research, I, 
pull up the app, pull up the app right there or the on the website, pull up Key Collector, pull up uh, uh, Go Collect and see if, or cover price, and see if, if, if you think a particular book is going to grade out, you think you can work on it and you think you can bump it up, see what it's going for, see if it's gonna be worth your time to pay the money that whatever that dealer's asking for there, even if you get a little bit of a deal, if it's going to be worth your time and that's what i did here this is these hauls that i do i this is what i do so i hope you guys take that and don't just sit back and say russ why don't you give us the prices on everything and i'm going i i guess part of it is i want you guys to go do the, you got to do the work yourself these are books every one of these books are books that i love and I've got a passion for them, whether I sell them or keep them. And that, that's a kind of a contributing factor to all this. I don't want this to be a video of, this is what Rusty recommends you going out and getting. Like, no, but I will show you books that I think can work out really well for you. So let's see, this, these are my books. All right, so for the first dealer, I'm just gonna get into it, guys. So from the first dealer, I ended up buying some Fantastic Fours. And the one that caught my eye first was Fantastic Four 243, and this is becoming a more sought out issue. Let me back this up just a little bit. Let's see if you can see the whole thing. There you go. 240, this is 243. 244 is the big issue where you have Frankie Ray becoming Nova, but this is a Galactus cover that's becoming more and more sought out, especially now that we're gonna have the FF in the MCU in the movies and everything. And I've had tremendous luck with this book, pressing and cleaning books I've bought over the last year. I've gotten my nine sixes. I have gotten, I've at least even got a nine eight on one of these. Nine eight on a book like this right here, that's a easily a three hundred dollar plus book. And he had a price of twenty two. Now I negotiated a little bit because I bundled a couple more books, but so it's a couple dollars off of that. But this condition is really good. Now I don't think it'll be a nine eight necessarily. There was a little tick over there. But even at a nut, it, let's just say I can knock this down to a $20 book and I can pull a 9.6, get it, put the money into it for, for grading, and you can still make a pretty decent profit off of it. It's not the, it's not the, you're not going to get rich on that, but you definitely can make some money on something like that. Or have it for your PC. It's up to you. Okay, so I ended up picking up two more books from this particular dealer. He had two more Fantastic Fours that I absolutely love. I love these books. I've gotten... At least one of the two of these graded in the past. I don't know if I got both of them yet or not, but I know I got this one right here graded. It says 247. Just a wonderful John Byrne Doctor Doom cover. This is probably one of the best Doctor Doom covers out there. This is a book. Uh, this is a book. I mean, if you can get a nine eight on this, it's pretty. It, you can make a pretty good penny on it. It's it's it ends up being hundred hundred plus dollar book, maybe a little bit more. I don't have the prices in front of me, but I I know that. If you can get a 9.8 on this, this makes this book valuable. 9.6s, it kind of drops off, and I've gotten, I think I've got 9.4s on this one. I don't think I've got a 9.6 on it yet. I have graded it out of my own PC, and I have picked up a few over the last year. But this copy for $6, and I said, it's not, I didn't even pay $6 because we bundled the price of these three books together and got it down a few dollars. But so I'm taking another shot on this. Hopefully this will this will press out really nice. And then the last one I've got is 249. Now this right here is the story where you've got Gladiator from the X-Men books, thinking that the Fantastic Four are scrolls, and he won't listen to reason, and he takes out the Fantastic Four, and then the X-Men show up on the last page, supposedly. And this is one of my favorite covers. They did in the Heroes Return the, over the last year, there was a cover where you had the Power Princess carrying Captain America, and I, it reminded me of this cover. I just absolutely, your, your, your heroes are just getting taken out, and they're, they're being lifted and carried like they're nothing. I just, I don't know, something strikes a chord in me. I love this cover, loved it when it came out, and I love it now. And Again, these are books, they look to be in really nice shape. I don't put a lot of money into them, but if you can pull those nine eights, these are books that are $100 plus books, sometimes more than that. That This one right here, 
as I said, I've gotten a 9.8 on it. I know what the value. It's a it's a $300 plus book in a 9.8. So you kind of take shots on going on some of these. At a show like this for under six dollars for any of these, these here, I don't. I'm not going to pull those books out necessarily. I'll just take the shot on goal, and and I'll end up adding to my PC if it ends up having defects that make it not worth getting graded. So, on a book like this, this is when you start paying that twenty dollar, thirty dollars plus prices on things. I'm trying to be a little bit more disciplined and take a look at books. Uh, have the dealer take the book out of the bag. Look at the back. Let's see what kind of damage we're talking about because I'm telling you, I can find so many really nice books. You look at them, especially under Mylar. That's that's a different story. But even looking at them, and it can be super clean. You don't have any, you see any defects. There's no color breaking spine ticks, and you're you think, okay, you're doing pretty good. And then you turn it over, and it's got a, let's say, uh, an X Men 213 or 212, and it's got that dark cover on the back, and it just got tons of spine ticks, color breaking spine ticks. And you're like, what are you doing? You've got to be disciplined. You've got to look at these books. If you're going to put money into it and at a certain level, you really don't throw your money away, guys. Just don't throw your money away. Look at the books. It's not a big deal. I think that it will help in the long run not to overspend. I'm trying to, as I said, I'm trying to be more disciplined on that. Know what you're getting when you put the money out. Okay, so some more books from the show that I picked up was from Jim, my buddy from Battlefield Comics. I have talked about him in the past and talked about the books I've been picking up from him. He, Hallie's, has a really nice collection. It, it changes all the time. You're getting nice, really high-grade books mixed in with a lot of other uh, regular books. I don't want to say dollar bin books, but he has those. He has uh, higher-priced books, but he always has some interesting things. And I didn't see anything like I did the last time. I got some nice Fantastic Four from him that I really, uh, really have some high hopes for. I think I've already put them through the press, actually. But uh, in this one, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me in terms of what I wanted to, something I expect uh, to spec on, except for a couple of these here. And they, they were not expensive. Uh, and he gave gives really good discounts. So I'm going to tell you what the price he had on there, but... Uh, in the end, I don't even know how much he actually ended up charging me. It was it was a lot less than what he had on here. But I ended up picking up the first and second issue of Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the movie ad adapta adap adaptation excuse me, from Marvel. And these look... I've got these books. They are on my PC, but they're readers. Uh, they're probably not in totally high, uh, low grade, but they definitely not something that I could ever really sell or spec on or anything like that, or any value really. But these look to be in really nice shape. And so I'm excited about getting these actually into the press. And he's got a $10 price tag and an $8 price tag. And in that same box, I actually picked up the John Byrne Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. And also a book that I have, I think I got this graded. I think I had my own personal copy. I had it in really nice shape, and I got it graded. So these were books that I, low risk, could be a high reward type of situation. If they don't, if I press, clean them, press them, and I decide that, okay, they're not definitely not going to grade out to a 9.8 or even a 9.6. If it's lower than that, my guess is they're not going to be worth getting graded. I'll end up holding on to them, or maybe I'll just sell them raw someday. But this right here, we're... These are little, again, little, uh, just a little bit of money could return something a lot better. And so those are really nice. Um, but then he had, he had some fun comics, and I'll tell, we'll talk about, talk about these here. I've, he had a small run of Marvel's Greatest Comics. These were the reprints in the 70s of the Fantastic Four. And this is what I grew up on. I mean, I grew up on regular Fantastic Four. You saw... In the last video, I showed you the very first Fantastic Four book I ever owned, issue, oh my god, what was it, 135. And, but I was also getting other Marvels, and this book was out at the same, around that same time. But they, this is uh, reprinting, was it issue 62 of Fantastic Four? This is where I learned about, this is where I read J Jack Kirby, and I loved these stories. 
I kind of knew they were reprints. I didn't really know what issues they were from. I was just reading comics and enjoying them. I knew they were reprints. I knew they weren't the real things. But this is where I learned about Blastar and the Negative Zone. And here's issue number 48. And you've got Ronan. And the first introduction, I guess, well, it's probably the second issue where they talk about the Kree and everything. And you get the the High Evolution, not the High Evolutionary. What is it? The, oh, crap. I'm, I can't remember. What's the name of the... Um, the leader of the Kree. I'm completely blanking. But learned about that. Um, here's one. Um, issue number 49. The reprinting of the first issue that starts to introduce the introduction of Warlock, eventually. Or, or him. Um, and these were just great books to learn how to re learn. I was learning learning about the Fantastic Four. Back for many, many years, you would go and read books, not just reprints, but any books, and they would have references. They would make a reference, and they would say, they'd make, they'd put a side note. Stan would have a side note on there. It's like, see issue, basically, see issue number such and such for the reference that, and that's how you kind of learned about your comics, and it's like, hey, I need to go out there and buy a back issue of issue number XX because it in this issue they talked about this and I kind of want to learn more about that so that was that was just a fun thing about these comics uh, growing up just generally not just reprints but any of the comics from from back in the day but I grew up on these books and these were in nice shape they're not I'm not specking on this this is fun stuff I love this and in the same vein he had Marvel Spectacular he had a run of these but I was I'll admit I was looking for ones that had some, I don't want to say significance, but something that had meaning to me. Um, I didn't have a lot of these, and the ones that he, all the ones that he had, none of them were really the ones that I had growing up, there because I didn't have all of them. I had a handful. But this one right here was always one of my favorites. It's the reprinting of, I don't remember the exact issue, but I know I've got, I own this. I own Thor, the issue where he fights a Super Scroll, and it's not a key comic at all, but I always love this cover. I love that that cover. Just, I thought that was awesome. So, anyway, picking up that was these were fun things from Jim. So I appreciate that, Jim. Jim, when you watch this video, thank you so much. And I will see you probably at the next show, definitely. Uh, let's see what what is next. What is next? Okay. Then I went to. I guess this was probably the last dealer of the day. And I've got one other one that I want to talk about more, but I've, the last dealer they had some really, his wall was a lot different than all the other walls at this show. It was a lot more newer books, uh, ratio variants of a lot of modern books. And I mean, there was some older stuff in there. I know there was a Spider Woman number one up that was on that wall. And there were, but there were mostly brand new stuff. There were some beautiful uh, Oh, who was it? I can't remember. Uh, Campbell. J. Scott Campbell. Books with Psylocke that were... Re uh, I think it was a reprint book, but it was a brand new cover that I asked about because I know that the, they're doing a CGC signing. I thought, wow, I love that Psylocke illustration. But the book was a super rare German version. So he had all these really... These type of books. And I'm not really looking at moderns like that. I, I looked at... Some of those because there was a possible CGC signing, but I wasn't looking at those as books to sp speculate on. But then I got into his bins, and he talked to me, and he said, Hey, what are you looking for? And then he said something about how the the boxes, there's more of what's ever in, on the wall there are in the boxes. And the boxes turned out to be a real nice mix. There was some older stuff in there. There was brand new stuff in there. At least it was, and then he had it broken down in, he was real good about having books that he had inspected the books and he had a little bit of a system where he broke them down that these were more reader books. Over here, let me put the books down. And over here, these were that kind of middle grade type books and then these were a little bit higher grade, but in those areas, they were still alphabetical and it was actually started finding some, finding some gems in there and that's that's what I did I found some gems in here and you'll see some price tags on here and again I we worked the price and we worked it down a little bit I, I don't remember my final price but it was definitely a lot less than what 
you add up these here. But I found another copy of Superman Adventures number one. I think this is the second one I've picked up over the last uh, three to four weeks. And I had gotten this graded. I, I pulled my own copy out of the PC. I clean and pressed it. I sent it out to CGC and ended up getting a 9.8. I ended up selling it. And here, yet again, I'm replacing books. And it's not so much replacing books as it is I know what I could, you can sell that book for. And it, I don't want this channel coming off like it's completely a channel of speculating and turning and burning and being a dealer. It's not what this is. There are times when I will keep them in my collection. There's times when I will look for books that I can get graded and I can still sell this. If I can get another 980, I can still sell this and help pay for the parts of the hobby that I want to keep here. You know, I need to keep, to keep, to sell that so I can keep, you know, getting getting a Jim Steranko graded book here. You know, that stays in the PC. This can get sold. So it's kind of, we all do this to a certain degree and I never want to come across as, oh, he's a dealer. That's, that's the last thing I want to do, but I do want to do, I kind of do what I do to help pay for a lot of this. And watch my videos, go back and see the number of CTC boxings I've done. It has been a lot of money invested in this and only some of that's going to stay in the PC. Uh, oh, moving on. So he had that, he had a issue of 245 Fantastic Four. This has gone up in value recently and he had a price tag of 15 on there, but I kind of really need to actually go into my own PC and pull this. I know I have it. I had that whole John Byrne run. I had multiples of a lot of issues, but I don't know if I had, um, I don't think I really started the multiples until we got into, I want to say into the two, it was about this time, but I don't know if I've got multiples of this. So I just went ahead and picked it up. Um, I had a, copy of Spider-Man number one and in his boxes he had multiples of some of these not all of these but this was a really nice copy I've gotten a couple of graded myself I think they're still in my PC my favorite Scott McFarlane cover I especially though the, and especially the favorite one of the Spider-Man number ones I did not like the gold one I don't like the regular green cover. I love this. I've, I think I've actually got this signed. I, I met Todd McFarlane many years ago here in Baltimore, and I had him. I could only get two autographs. That was my limit. Well, that was the limit they gave me. And I got this signed, and I got Spawn number one signed. So they are getting ready to do a CGC signing with Todd McFarlane at the end of, I think it's the end of the month, or maybe it's in October. I'm not sure. I'll have to check the dates. But... I was like, okay, what books do I want? If I wanted to get something CGC graded and get that yellow label, what do I want? And this right here, even though I've got a copy signed, it's not graded. And I'm sitting there going, I think I would do that all over again. I think I'd get a copy of Spawn number one and I get a copy of this. This is what I would still send to McFarlane. Even with all the other books that are out there, this is still what I would get signed. Um, this is a copy of a comic I don't think I had actually I might have it but I didn't have this cover this is the art germ cover to 705 Mighty Thor 705 and just absolutely a stunning cover and I know there's some spec on I don't want to say spec but it's there's some value on this book if you can get that 9.8 and I bought that strictly as a cover buy and a completely as a speculation type book and then the last book I picked up and it looks super clean, spine trick free on the front, and so, and I know it's a white border on the back, so I'm hoping that this right here, this is Batman 404, the Batman Year One, Frank Miller, Dave Mazzarelli, I've gotten my 9.8 on this before, it is a, this is another shot on goal on this, hopefully this book will grade out the same. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting that one into the press as well. So these that was a pretty pretty good little haul right there. And then I had one other dealer and I talked to before we got to the show. I didn't even know they were going to be setting up. Uh, they had had a big sale the day before and I didn't think they were going to be at the show. But then late on the night before the show, 
they contacted me on Facebook Messenger and they said, because I had asked, I said, hey, there's certain things I'm looking for right now. I, I'm still looking for certain issues of John Byrne's X-Men run and I'm looking for a new mutants, I'm sorry, new Teen Titans number two, the first appearance of Deathstroke. I'm looking for a super high grade on, on these. And he came back late that night and they said, sent me a picture and they said they've got something that they were going to bring to the show for me if I really wanted. And I said, hey, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll come, let me check it out. And that was a copy of X-Men 135, the first full appearance of Dark Phoenix. And just an absolutely striking cover. Man, that is, what a cover that is. And this is better than the one that I picked up off of Whatnot a few weeks ago. And, one of the, and you probably saw it in one of my last videos. This is a spectacular cover right here. And I don't think it'll come out 9.8, but I definitely think it's got a shot at a 9.6, which is fine with me because I've been very happy collecting 9.6 of the John Byrne X-Men run. That's sort of my soft spot, sweet spot, however you want to call it, in that run. And this one right here kind of fits that bill. So... That was the one I knew that it was bringing. So I started going through the boxes that they have. And, and I ended up picking up. He had just picked up some really good books. And um, again, we you'll see some price tags maybe on here. But uh, we worked out a deal. So it wasn't quite what you see on here. But I picked up. He had a really nice run of Daredevil Born Again. The Again, Frank Miller and Dave Mazzarelli. And this is right here, I got picked up two issues of issue 228. I picked up, here's one copy of 229. An issue of, one issue of 231. And I'm going to move this down, hang on. 231. And then one copy of 233. And I've got all these, the issue... 229. I don't think I only had one copy of this. Some of the other ones, all the other ones I had multiples. I think I only had one of this one for whatever reason. And again, all these books at nine eights and maybe nine sixes have got some value. Uh, issue 227 is one of the more popular, mm, expensive books. And he did have two copies of that that were a lot more expensive than these, but they did have some spine ticks. So I passed on those. But I took all of these, and oh, I was going to say, I had one copy of this in my PC that I was talking about, but it had some spine ticks, so nothing was going to, nothing's going to happen with that, so I, that's why I got this one. But uh, yeah, so I, so I ended up picking those up. Every one of these look in super high grade. Um, we'll see about getting them clean and pressed, and we'll make that evaluation. Will they go out again? I don't know. And then the last thing I picked up, and... He was pointing out a couple of defects that I felt like were pressable. And I picked up another copy of Thor 336. This is the first appearance of, I guess, Throg. I really hate that name. It's just not necessary. But Thor as a frog, as a huge, giant frog. Uh, that's awesome. Just what a wonderful uh, Walt Simonson cover. I think I've got a co my original copy of this. I think I've gotten this signed, but from Walt Simonson, but it was many years ago at this point, and back in the day, most artists would open up the cover, and they would sign down at the bottom at the splash page, and I think that is what I have got on that, so this right there, if I, this is one of those that might, if I press and clean it, get it to a really good shape, I might save it to do what I did with this one, and, and sorry about their light, and take it to Baltimore here in the next month and when Walt and his wife Louise are going to be there and see if I might get this one signed again on the cover so I can get it graded. Um, any books that I've got with autographs on the inside of the book, I'll never get graded. I, I, I it doesn't make sense to me. I don't want, I, I want to see those autographs. It, that's, it's something. Just you telling me that it says on the label, oh, such and such has autographs on the inside. Well, it, it, that's awful. I mean, I don't, how can you hide the autograph? I mean, that's part of that story of that comic that you have there. But if you can't see it, how do you really know it's there? And then you can't even enjoy it. So 
Uh, those books I'll not get graded, but if I get some of these again, I'll get them on the cover, and that way they can be presented and preserved and just an absolute keepsake. So anyway, guys, that is it. I hope you got some takeaway from this video. Again, I'm getting away from this idea that this is just a show and tell. This is what Rusty bought because, oh, that's what he gets, and this is the books he's into. Well, yeah, these are the books I in, I'm into. I love every one of these. I've read every one of these books. I love this stuff. This is, this is my jam. This is my, these are my books, and I, I think you, if you, this part of this hobby, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. I, I think you need to enjoy the books that you're getting. My passion is for these, and that's why I'm putting the time and care into these, into this process, to bring it to other people, to bring it to my PC. And I want you guys to come away from this with a little bit of, I want you to go to the shows, I want you to pick up books, I want you to enjoy it, get what you want. And if you want to do this thing that I'm doing, you've got to go, you got to do the research, look it up. I use Go Collect and Cover Price, and then also eBay, eBay sold price uh, for sold listings. Use these, use these tools, do your research, look up what these books, if you're going to get a raw and you want to get it graded and you want to sell it, you've got to know what they sell for at what, at these grades and set them up, have, see what your range is from, from high to low. It's pretty easy. It takes some time, but do it. And then you can go and take a look at this and say, okay, well, he had a $25 price tag on here. What about, could, if I, we didn't work a deal and knock this down a little bit, let's just say $25. Can I put $25 into this and then turn around and put what's it going to be for just a regular modern submissions of CGC? Uh, it's going to be 25 to, well, probably closer to $30. So that's another $30. $30. So already, let's just say you're into it for, let's say a 35 plus 25, what is that? Um... Was that 60? Oh my God, I can't add. Yeah, so $60. If you can get a 9.8 on that, what's your profit margin? What's your return on investment? This is something every one of you, if you're going to do this, you kind of got to do it. You've got to take into account. And you also have to know if you're going to sell it, where do you sell it? You've got to understand that there are seller fees all over the place, and that's part of the game. If there's other avenues where you don't have seller's fees, but you, you, it's a lot more trouble sometimes. It's up to you guys. It's, this is all, you guys have got to do your own journey on this. I'm going to try to lead the way. I'm not going to tell you how to do this. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing and encourage you to take some of the similar steps that I'm taking. Hopefully, you'll get something out of it. So, that's it, guys. I'm done rambling. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this haul. Let me know in the comments what you think of the books and what do you think of the process. I look forward to hearing from you and reach out. Let me know what books you're getting and what, what is your process. Am I off base? Let me know that too. Who knows? I'm definitely off base. We know that. My wife would tell me that. But guys, I really enjoy this. I hope you do too. So I will see you for the next video. Take care.